Hello, in this video I will explain how to compute the Jacobian of a robot manipulator by solving a numerical example. The robot to be used is the IRB140 robot model from ABB. Here I show the dimensions of the robot as well as its joints definition. The home configuration is the one shown in the figure with all joint values equal to zero in this configuration. The Dynabit Hardenberg method is used to set the position and orientation of reference frames for each link. In the table, I show the corresponding Dynabit Hardenberg parameters associated with the position and orientation of the frames shown in the figure on the left. So, for instance, let's assume that we want to compute the Jacobian of the end effector at a given configuration. In the following example, I will assume that the first joint is positioned at 90 degrees, while the third joint is positioned at minus 90 degrees. The remainder of joints are in zero position. The robot for this configuration is as shown in the left. These values, or with these values, we can compute the relative transformation matrices for its reference frame based on the David Hardenberg transformation matrix and the current joint values. So for instance, we can compute matrices A10, A12, and all the matrices, matrices shown here. You can easily verify that the third column of this matrix points towards the z-axis of the current uh, link or, or frame with respect to the previous uh, reference frame of the previous link, obviously. And also, for instance, the fourth column contains the relative position between the reference frame. I think it's a good idea to check and validate all these computations to, to make sure that they are correct. Otherwise, any mistake we produce here will carry or will imply additional mi uh, mistakes in the, in the remainder of uh, calculations. So, for instance, the offset of the second coordinate system with respect to the first one implies a negative distance of minus 360 millimeters in the direction of the y1 axis, which is correct, because if by mistake we had obtained a positive value there, then that would imply that the second reference frame would be actually below the ground, according to the definition of the first reference frame. Once we have computed and validated all relative frames, then we can compute also the absolute reference frames, so that is with respect to the robot base. Again, we can check if the results are correct, particularly the third column, which corresponds to the direction of the z-axis. Please remember that in order to obtain the matrix A02 or 2, or 2 0, then we have to multiply the matrix A10 with the matrix A21, shown before. Also, to obtain the matrix A30, then we can obtain it by multiplying the matrix A20 with the matrix A32, and so on. After we have completed all these calculations, we can extract the vector Z, as highlighted, from each transformation. Being by definition the vector z0, the vector 001, as you can see. In addition to this, we can also extract the position for each reference frame as indicated, being in this case the position t0 vector, a vector with zeros, also again by definition. Once all these vectors are known, then we can compute the Jacobian of the robot by using the expression, as you can see here. In this case, we use this expression because all joints are revolute joints, but remember that in case we have a prismatic joint, then in the corresponding column affected by this joint, we would just include the vector z for the linear velocity component, that's the first uh, row of this uh, Jacobian matrix, and for the second row, we will fill it with zeros for the angular velocity component. So for this particular configuration and robot, then the resulting uh, Jacobian is the one shown here. Now we will analyze uh, this or the result of this Jacobian. 
we observe that the first row of this Jacobian, this is describing the linear velocity in the x coordinate, depends, this velocity depends only on the velocity of the first joint, while the angular velocity in the set coordinate depends on the velocities for, of joints 1, 4, and 6. This analysis is important because, for instance, if we want to implement the kinematic control, we can use this Jacobian to determine where or how or which, which uh, joint can we uh, modify if we want to move on a specific direction. Similarly, we can observe that joints 2, 3 and 5 contribute in this case to the linear velocity in the y coordinate and also in the angular velocity in the x coordinate, as you can see. This is uh, showing that the linear velocity component is also more sensitive to variations of joint 2 compared to variations of joint 5. This is quite obvious because the rotation in Q2 will imply a higher linear displacement of the end effector compared to the same rotation in Q5 due to the distance to the, between the, the axis of the joint and the end effector. And more importantly, also analyzing the Jacobian, we realize that there are two rows with zeros, which means that no matter what values we provide to the joint velocities, that implies that there's no linear velocity in the set direction or set coordinate, as well as there's no possibility to have an angular uh, velocity in the y coordinate at least instantly. In this particular configuration, we cannot move in these two directions. Indeed, if we compute the rank of the Jacobian matrix, we get that the rank for this Jacobian matrix is 4, and therefore is rank deficient, because the maximum expected rank would be obviously 6. This provides, as I said, a hint that there are two directions that they are not allowed. In many cases, these directions are not that obvious as the one shown here, but anyway, the, analyzing the rank of the Jacobian matrix is a clear indicator that it's important for us to know how many uh, independent directions we can implement for a specific configuration. So for this reason, in order to compute the rank of the Jacobian matrix, we need to find the number of independent rows or linearly independent rows this can be done first by removing the rows with zeros or just simply repeated rows or rows that are a linear combination of other rows. Then we need to find which is the largest submatrix with a non-zero determinant. We start by finding if there's at least one element which is different from zero, then we know at least that the rank will be one or higher. Then we analyze if there's a two by two submatrix with a non-zero determinant and then again, we can say that there's a, at least the rank is two or higher and so on. So for example, following with the previous example, we already know that the Jacobian matrix had two rows with zeros, and therefore we can remove those rows from the original matrix. And then also we realize that there's at least one element which is different from zero. So at least we know, we can check, easily check that the rank will be at least one. So then we try to find if there's a submatrix size 2 times 2, if there's a determined determinant of this submatrix is different from 0, and then we realize that, yeah, we can find another matrix with a determinant different from 0. And also uh, the matrix or the submatrix times three, uh, 3 times 3 and 4 times 4. In the end, we realize that the rank for this Jacobian matrix is actually 4. And also, please bear in mind that there are many submatrices uh, for a given size, and uh, we just simply need to find one with a non-zero determinant before we try a larger matrix. In this video, I have explained how to compute the Jacobian of a robot manipulator using a numer numerical example. Thank you very much.